Hello YouTube! Today I've got a tutorial for you and uh, in this tutorial I'm basically going to show you how to do a Apollo style mission to the moon. So we're going to try and make it as uh, functionally realistic as possible, not necessarily aesthetically, but we're going to try and do a good job at that anyway. It's not necessarily possible without making the ship too sort of wobbly and things, so there's some compromises we have to make aesthetics wise, but uh, yeah, apart from that it's a pretty good recreation. We do everything from uh, obviously the orbital rendezvous, starting with the uh, landing module or the lunar module in sort of the wrong place essentially. We do all that and we even get a free return trajectory around the moon, which is what they do for safety reasons. And I'll go through that a bit more as we do it. But uh, first of all, we need to know how to build the rocket. So the first thing we need is a, what's it, um, Mark 1-2 pod. And uh, we're going to put a docking port on top of that. We can use this one here, the shielded docking port, or the normal Clampertron docking port. I just think this one looks nicer. And then we've got to stick a couple of parachutes on here, just making sure they're not obstructing any windows or the hatch or the ladder or anything. So that's where I've put mine, and that seems to work fine. Uh, in here, we have to have a decoupler for when this essentially comes back into the atmosphere. And uh, for that, I like to use the stack separator because it's nice and thin. But uh, if you want, you can use the brand decoupler, the Rockamax brand decoupler, um, in, in the same place. It shouldn't make much difference, but uh, this will make the rocket a little bit smaller anyway, and make it look a bit, little bit neater. Now under here, we've got a small um, Rockamax X208 fuel tank, and uh, underneath that we've got the Poodle, and then another stack separator. Now this one does need to be a stack separator, because we've got to split both sides off without leaving the decoupler on either side because obviously we need to use the docking port and we need to use the engine so that does need to be a stack separator under there we've got the docking port for the lunar module and also a uh, FLR25 fuel tank that's the one so that's this one here and then underneath that we've got the MK2 lander can which is this one Mark II lander can now around that we do have two fuel tanks and uh, there's a couple of ways you can mount these it depends how much you object to part clipping basically. You can mount them sideways like this but then the whole thing looks a bit weird or you can do what I did and actually put them on top and then rotate them around like that with W, A, S and D so that they sit sort of in the sides and that just gives it a bit more of an aesthetically pleasing look to it. Um, but we do need pretty much, well you don't need quite this much food, you could use the slightly smaller tanks if you want, these ones but uh, just to be safe it's better to have more fuel than not enough so we're going to use those slightly larger tanks. And uh, around here we've got four RCS thrusters placed with four times symmetry, like that. Uh, underneath that we've got another stack separator, and again this could be a uh, brand decoupler if you wanted it to be, um, but again the stack separator looks a bit nicer, it's a bit thinner. And then underneath that we've got another one of the same fuel tank that we have up here, with four of the small legs mounted around it, like so. And uh, just like to point out that we do have struts connecting this, just to add a little bit of strength here. So, you know, those are pretty easy to add. Just click on like this and drag them up, and they should do their job. So you will need to add them in between the stack separator and the MK2 lander can, I think it is. Yep, the lander can. And then also between this stack separator and this fuel tank. Under here we've got an LV909 liquid fuel engine which doesn't have very much thrust but it's quite small so these landing legs will go over it easily enough and uh, yeah it's, it's you know what we need basically um, even though the thrust to weight ratio of this will be a little bit low but it's uh, pretty realistically low if that makes sense in fact the one in real life was probably lower than this so yeah it's not too bad it just means we have to land in a certain way which is a pretty good way to land anyway so, as I said, we've got the stack separator here, then we've got um, two of the sort of standard size fuel tanks, that's the X232 fuel tanks, and under that we've got a Rockamax skipper. And then, uh, basically, to stop the craft being wobbly, we decided to, I, I decided to use one big stage at the bottom to get us most of the way into space. So, this stage is three X232 fuel tanks with a mainsail at the bottom of those and then round that we've got three x232 fuel tanks again but with skippers on all of them and that's in four times symmetry with their uh, nose cones on the top and you'll see the struts up there just to add a bit more structural integrity 
Now the important thing here is that you put on a couple of these um, fuel lines. So you want to put one going from the inside outwards. Make sure these are in full time symmetry by the way. And then one going from the outside inwards. And that's just going to let um, fuel transfer between these outer tanks and the inner tank. And that's going to mean that all these engines run out at the same time, which is what we want. So staging wise, first of all we want all those four and uh, the single engine in the middle engines to go off. And then we're going to split off uh, this whole bottom stage when that's run out and uh, activate this skipper engine. After that we're going to split off this part here and activate this engine up here, the poodle. And uh, at that point we're going to have to undock, move around and dock again. And uh, to do that we are going to have to split off this part here as well, which is in the next stage. Then after that we'll have um, gotten to the moon and everything, undocked and um, activate this LV909 here. And then once we've landed and uh, finished everything we need to do on the moon, we're going to split off the bottom of the lander stage, leave the bottom of the lander and uh, activate these engines here, which are going to get us up and um, back into orbit and hopefully to rendezvous with um, back with the land uh, sorry back with the service module i think it is the command and service module anyway after that we then have to obviously use the um, poodle to get back and uh, then we're going to split off the capsule and eventually activate the parachutes and actually i usually like putting my parachutes in a separate stage because if I put them in a separate stage, it means I can wait till a bit later before we activate them. So we save some time, basically. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the build. Now we need to go out to the launch pad. And uh, basically, I'm going to take you through how to fly this thing. So we're on the launch pad now, and we're just going to throttle up and uh, go before the ship wobbles itself to death, because it is a bit wobbly, and uh, you can't really do much about that. It won't be the quickest accelerating ship ever, but as these uh, fuel tanks here start to run out of fuel, the thrust to weight ratio will increase, so you don't need to worry about the fact that it will go very, very slow to start off with. Now, you need to make sure when you're building it that these engines are all pretty much at the same height as well, otherwise um, the mainsail in the middle might actually break on the launch pad, and uh, that's happened to me, that happened to me in one of the test flights. Anyway, um, now we just need to keep going up till we get to around 10 kilometers. So from here it's pretty boring, but uh, at least we've got the Kerbal's faces to entertain us, I guess. So, now, um, as I said, we just need to wait. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd explain a bit about those free return trajectories that I was talking about earlier, because those are kind of interesting. Basically, if you don't know, a free return trajectory is when you burn so that you go round the opposite direction around the moon. Um, so you, you come round in a sort of east to west orbit rather than a west to east orbit when you're around the moon. And um, what that means is that uh, if you set it upright, you can actually, if you don't burn at all when you're at the moon, your escape trajectory from the moon will actually lead you back to a curb and intercept that will actually bring you back within the atmosphere and that's why it's called free return you don't you know the return is free you don't need to burn at all to get a return and uh, the idea behind that is it's essentially a safety measure in case something you know went wrong when you were actually got to the moon and for example the engines didn't work or something like that then you don't have to worry too much because as long as you don't burn you're still come, gonna come back to earth or Kerbin, um you know safely which is a good thing i guess so that's why they did it in the Apollo missions. We don't have to worry about it too much in KSP. But anyway, now we get to 10 kilometers. We're going to have to pitch over to 45 degrees and uh, do that, as, as I said, about 10 kilometers, maybe a bit earlier if you want, maybe 8 kilometers, start doing it. And you don't want to do it too fast either because something may uh, fall off if you do. Anyway, as long as you um, do that reasonably smoothly, you should be up there. You want to be pointing at 45 degrees by the time you're at about 12 kilometers up. And now you're just going to keep on accelerating and uh, keep on pointing 45 degrees up essentially at this kind of angle here. And make sure you do go east in case you didn't know. Uh, that's a kind of standard thing which I sort of forgot to mention. But yeah, make sure you're going east, which is towards the sort of 90 line here. Yeah, because that's obviously the way that is most efficient to launch. And uh, yeah, basically this stage should get us pretty much into space, and then we're going to need to extend our orbit a bit with the skipper, skipper stage, and then circularize with that stage too, and also make the burn to the moon with that stage. But that stage is quite big and has quite a lot of delta V, so that's not too big a deal, it should have enough fuel. 
Anyway, we're going to pitch over a little bit now as we start to run out of fuel on these just to elongate our orbit a little bit because it's already in space. And there you go, that's them run out and our apoapsis is high enough that we don't actually have to worry about burning anymore right now. So we can split off and I'm going to burn just a little bit to make sure we don't hit back with that ship. And uh, yeah, you can see our apoapsis is at 80 plus kilometers. As long as you're above 75 kilometers, you should be okay. But I wouldn't go uh, any lower than that really, just in case something bad happens. So now, um, yep, we just want to wait till we get out of the atmosphere, which is about now. And uh, time warp up till we're pretty much at our apoapsis. A good way to tell is if your prograde marker's circle is touching the line of the horizon, basically. And now we're going to start burning pretty much prograde. And I'm going to pitch over like this, so uh, it's a bit easier to do this part. And um, yeah, basically, if the apoapsis is moving too close towards you, you need to pitch upwards, away from Kerbin, to sort of stop it moving towards you so much. And uh, if it starts to go behind you, you need to pitch up quite a lot, like I'm doing now. And it should pull it back towards you. Um, and if it starts to go too far in front of you, you have to pitch down. And basically, we're going to keep burning like this, making these little adjustments until we get to the point where we are in a circular orbit, basically. So you want to keep your ap apoapsis as close to you as possible, um, because then when you make your orbit and finish off circularizing your orbit, it will be pretty circular. But uh, it doesn't matter if it's a bit off, as long as you get into orbit and have enough fuel left over to make a transfer burn with this stage, then you should be okay. So now my apoapsis is going away a little bit, so I just need to pitch down a little bit towards Kerbin again. St I'm still pitched up overall though. And basically you need to keep making these little adjustments until your orbit becomes circular. And you'll notice that it's getting pushed even further away. If it starts to get a bit more jittery, that means you're close to circularizing your orbit, and you'll see we are pretty close. So now I just need to keep burning and keep burning until it actually does get circularized, which should be in the next few moments. Um, so yeah. There we go, that's our periapsis up, and uh, we just need to keep burning prograde now until they spin around very quickly, because that means they're trying to swap places because they're so close together, and uh, yeah, that means we're in a pretty circular orbit. So, if you've got this far, then well done. You should have just under half, it looks like, of your fuel left. I know this should be enough to get the transfer burn done, which is all we need to do, basically. And now we're going to need to look for where the moon is. The moon's over there. And we're going to make the free return trajectory burn now. So the first thing we're going to do before we're even you know, making a burn that's going to go to the moon, we need to make a burn which is going to get us to around, I think, 13.5 million meters. So basically it's 13, 500, 000, 000, 000 um, at your apoapsis, at your predicted apoapsis. And that should be about right for a re free return trajectory. And then you're going to move this uh, maneuver round until it gets to the point where it looks and by the way sorry about this being a bit jittery I can't do much about that but you're gonna try and get it to the point where it looks something like this so you'll see you're going out then you're going round the moon and then coming back down to Kerbin and that's how it would work anyway we might need to burn a little bit more prograde here but that's not a big deal and yeah this may be a bit jittery for you as well but uh, the closer you get, the finer adjustments you can make. So it says our moon periapsis there. We want to get that down to um, between 10 and 20 kilometers is absolutely fine. Uh, but it looks like this is going to be a bit jittery. Anyway, as long as that's about right, we'll make the final adjustments when we're there. And this burn should take you about pretty much exactly a minute. So you're going to need to wait till 30 seconds before the maneuver to burn so that you spread out your burn across the maneuver node, um, as, as always. Um, if there's anything you're having trouble with, by the way, in this tutorial, anything you don't quite understand, and by the way, I'm going to quick save now so we don't miss this encounter if we muck something up. Um, if there's anything you don't understand, then I've got tutorials for pretty much everything in this video somewhere else that in, you know, I will go into things in more depth. Anyway, that's 30 seconds away pretty much now. So we're going to make sure we spin ourselves around a little bit using a little bit of thrust just to do that. Um, and... There we go, and we just want to point towards the maneuver. So that's that blue marker on the nav ball. 
Now if you didn't know that already then you probably shouldn't be trying this mission yet because it's not the easiest thing to do, it's going to involve some docking in a minute as well. And uh, yeah, we're just going to try and get this done. By the way, if you want to be a bit more realistic, I think the um, the crew actually... Oh, I'm not sure actually, yeah, I think, I think the crew all started off inside the command module, the top bit of the rocket, I'm not completely sure on that though. And then when they... no, 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 that's not right. Yeah, I think one of them at least, or two of them, were in the lander module to start off with, because obviously they had to be able to control with that, to dock with it, I think. Um, but actually, I think they had RCS on the uh, command and service module as well, which we don't. We're just, you know, functionally making it the same. It will do the same thing, even if that doesn't have RCS. Anyway, we're getting close to where our orbit will be, you know, perfect pretty much. So now we're going to burn like we are now and just keep doing it very gently till we get our moon periapsis. Well, we're going to burn until your orbit looks like this, then it'll go back round and eventually it will start to look something like the free return trajectory which we plotted and yeah once you get close to finishing it I'm going to actually get rid of the maneuver node because I know I need to burn prograde anyway and we're going to wait till our periapsis gets to as I said sort of 15 kilometers is about perfect it's far enough away from the moon that you know you're not going to hit anything but it's close enough that it won't take too much delta V to take off from the moon and get you know and dock essentially so now before we forget and before we get into the moon's sphere of influence after we've quick saved and everything is um, we're going to essentially split off the um, transfer stage like that which should be the next space bar if you've pressed everything correctly and then uh, we're going to need to oh, first of all we can open this shield and then we're going to need to move some kerbals from here over to the uh, lunar module I think it's correctly called so we're going to move Jeb over because Jeb obviously is going to be one of the ones that goes down to the uh, moon because he's a total badass and uh, who else can we move let's take Bob down so Bill's going to stay in the command and service module which I think is the correct name for it hope I'm not getting that wrong and then um, he's going to wait for them to obviously go down to the moon and come back up again and meet with him in lunar orbit. So anyway, now we've split off that um, next stage, which is going to leave this as is, and then we're going to switch over till we get to this one. Here we go, the one that has the kerbals in it. And then we're going to have to use RCS to do this. This is going to be a bit delicate. Um, so yeah, we're going to burn with the just RCS, nothing else, until. Yep, there we go. And we're going to need to dock basically with the um, service module. Now I'm hoping that doesn't hit it, or if it does hit it, it doesn't hit it too hard. Yeah, that's fine. So now I'm going to set this service module as the target, like that. And then I'm going to burn retrograde. So now we just need to get rid of all our relative velocity. And then uh, we can point ourselves in the right direction basically to dock. Now, if you're not familiar with the docking procedure, then um, the best way to do it is basically to make sure you're pointed in the same direction as your target, which if you're in an equatorial orbit, it's always a good idea to point north and south, but I'm good enough at this that I don't really need to worry about that yet. Um, and then once we've done that, we can um, use the translation controls, which is like I, J, K, and L to move left, right, forwards, no, left, right, um, up and down, and then H and N are forwards and backwards. Anyway, now we've docked. So what we can do from here is make sure it's the right engine that's activated. It is, so that's all good. And then I'm going to quick save again, and we're going to wait till we get into uh, lunar orbit or lunar orbit. So now we've time warped in, and actually our periapsis. Um, with the moon is non-existent we will collide with the moon so we're going to need to make some adjustment and you can do that with the maneuver node if you want um, basically you're going to be burning normal positive I think it is if you're burning away from the moon but I'm not sure so that's going to be the blue one here and you just want to adjust it so that your periapsis is as I said something around 10 to 20 kilometers I'm going to go for 13 the lucky number and uh, yeah, that should be all good. So I'm going to quick save again and then uh, time warp till we get down to that uh, periapsis. Now you can see there's the Apollo style test launch 
uh, flag so we know that everything should work right and I've made some adjustments to make it work even a little bit better and now we're at our periapsis we're gonna obviously need to burn uh, retrograde which will be east if you've done everything right if you've done the free return trajectory which by the way you don't need to do um, it's just a realism thing so now we should be able to burn to slow ourselves down and uh, yeah you may want to go into this view just to force your game to load everything so that it doesn't do it later load all the terrain for the moon so that it doesn't have to do it just before you're trying to land which can be a bit dangerous and uh, the other thing I'd recommend doing is forcing your camera into free mode which you can do by hitting V until it says camera free and that's just going to make it easiest for the landing view and I'd recommend just doing that before you forget to do it basically so now we just keep burning retrograde until our orbit gets pretty much circular we don't want to bring our periapsis too low down though but uh, it doesn't really matter too much so now I'm going to go to my apoapsis because actually this looks like a pretty good place to land so we're going to land basically we need to get to the opposite of where we want to land so if we want to land somewhere down here we need to go to somewhere over here and now once we're there or just before we're there we're going to undock uh, there we go switch over with the square bracket keys again activate the single engine and then uh, turn on SAS and everything make sure that's working and now we're going to do a retrograde burn to bring this periapsis down to basically you need to watch the uh, map and I'd say around five kilometers is about right but uh, basically you want it so that this line is barely if at all inter intersecting with the terrain on the moon so you'll see if I burn a bit more retrograde because we do have more than enough fuel in this stage really if I burn a little bit retrograde you'll see it's starting to touch the moon there and that's probably a bit uh, too close so we want to go a little bit further away than that so we're not actually going to hit the moon um, and there we are now it's time to say goodbye to Bill hopefully not for the last time and uh, time warp until we get round a bit closer to this periapsis that we've got oh, Jeb looks pretty happy about this so it can't be too bad and uh, yeah I'd recommend trying to land on the light side of the moon just for you know m making it a bit easier to see and everything and also I'm gonna quick save again before we go into this in case something goes horribly wrong which it can um, and the landing procedure I'm gonna show you is my favorite way to land most of the time And you'll see we're already really close to the land and um, but don't worry we're not gonna hit it uh, we shouldn't hit it that's one of the things that can go wrong with this landing procedure and uh, now starting to get towards the periapsis anyway it doesn't really matter if we're quite there yet and um, now we're gonna start burning um, in fact no we'll time warp a bit more yet let's just hope we don't hit this um, edge here anyway there we go we can't time warp anymore so we may as well just start burning retrograde now you don't want to just point retrograde you want to point sort of horizontal to retrograde so like for example for us it should be east which is obviously the, the 90 line there and you want to keep doing that but make sure your vertical speed but basically well actually basically make sure you're not going to hit any of the terrain so if you need to burn up a little bit you need to burn up a little bit if you don't then that's fine too just make sure that you don't hit any terrain and that you're not coming down too fast so I just want to make sure I don't hit the, the lip of this crater here um, we should be okay for that though now and uh, yeah you want to get rid of all this horizontal velocity without obviously hitting anything because hitting stuff isn't good for your craft unless it's done at very low speeds anyway now yep this is going pretty well so far I'm just making sure that I'm not gonna hit any of the terrain that's coming up here and uh, this is why you want to make sure that you you know your orbit isn't intersecting with the moon's terrain because then you probably will hit something and with a craft with such a low thrust to weight ratio you don't have that much control over this so you just want to be a bit careful with that really and uh, yeah basically at the moment just keep burning like this until we get rid of all that horizontal velocity that we've had um, I know pretty, pretty much all of our velocity was horizontal we're only going down by about 10 meters a second and yep yeah, there we go this looks like it's going to be a pretty good landing though and um, if you're not so good at landings I'd recommend maybe making your periapsis a you know a thousand meters higher up so that you give yourself a bit more leeway for this because it isn't the easiest type of landing to do but uh, it's reasonably efficient and uh, it works well for this kind of mission so 
Uh, try and make sure you stay in line with your retrograde marker, you know, stay pointing east basically, because if you don't, then you'll end up putting yourself away essentially from where the orbit of the thing that you need to dock to later on is. And uh, now we've pretty much gotten rid of all that horizontal velocity though, and we can think about actually touching down on the surface, which should be good. Uh, so there we go, that's nearly all of our velocity gone, we're just going to burn it all away until our retrograde marker is at the top of our nav ball, which means we're falling straight down, and we don't have a very long fall to make because of how low our periapsis was, which is kind of the good thing about this type of landing. So we're just going to burn and bring ourselves down at less than a couple of meters a second is good. Less than five meter sec meters a second is fine though, if you can manage that. And we don't have too much clearance on these landing legs with this engine, so you want to be a bit careful that you don't come down too hard. Although we don't really need that engine anymore, so it's not too big a deal. So once you've done all the stuff that you want to do on the moon, just uh, jump back into the capsule. And uh, then we're going to need to watch out for when that, um, well, the service module, command and service module, comes back round. So you'll see that's the one here. So... We're going to wait till it gets reasonably close, um, something around there, maybe a little bit closer, around there looks okay. I'm going to quick save before I do this in case we don't time this quite right, although there are ways of accounting for that. And then basically when you're ready you're going to have to hit space and uh, burn, and it should be west that you have to burn. So we're going to burn up like this, and I'm also going to set this as my target. And uh, I think we may have gone a little bit too early here. But I'll show you how to get around that in a second. If you've gone too early, then it's best to sort of elongate your orbit a little bit, and you'll eventually get the intersect that you want. We do have plenty of fuel in this stage, that's not something you should have to worry about really, as long as you don't do this too inefficiently. But uh, yeah, there we go. So that's an intersect there that's only a five kilometers away from each other which should be good enough. We're not going to quick save anymore though, because in case we screw this up, we still need to get back to uh, where we were. So now we get to you know somewhere close to that intersect, we're going to burn target retrograde. So make sure this says target and then burn retrograde. And that will put us on a very similar orbit to our target, obviously, which is this one. Just keep burning until that's as low as you know, close to zero as you can get it. 0 0.5 there, that's pretty damn good and we should be in an orbit yep there we go so it's at this point where you want to make some finer adjustments probably um, you know try and get this right down to 0 0.1 or something and then if we look in this view we can actually see our target over there so if we point towards our target which is this p uh, pink one pink marker here and make sure our prograde is on that we can go you know 50 25 meters a second or something towards it and we will eventually get a little bit closer um, you'll notice though that the prograde and the pink markers drift away from each other a little bit so you'll need to make some adjustments for that but don't worry too much about that and just keep you know making those adjustments and eventually there you go we've gotten close enough to it that we can just burn target retrograde again until we get rid of all of that velocity and you see there it's only a few hundred meters away from us and we've still got a little bit of fuel to spare but the rest of this we're pretty much going to have to do on RCS fuel I'm just going to burn to maybe five meters a second or so until we are just going straight towards it at a very controllable speed which we could even stop ourselves with uh, RCS if we needed to anyway there we are less than a hundred meters away now really really close Jeb looks really happy about this too so again we must be doing something right and now we're just gonna burn away that velocity and the rest of this we will definitely have to do on RCS if you've already run out of liquid fuel though you can use RCS now that doesn't make much difference so the first thing I'd recommend doing now that you're really close is quickly switching to the other craft and pointing yourself I'd say south for for the service module and uh, north for your module. You can do it the other way around though, that doesn't make much difference anyway. And I'm actually running out of electric charge now, so I'm going to need to use RCS. But there we go, we point ourselves north, and uh, now we can use the RCS translation controls. So we want to go right a little bit, get ourselves in line sort of this, this way, 
I'm actually going to rotate myself around a little bit too so these translation controls mark, uh, match up perfectly um, with my keyboard. So once we're pretty much in line left and right wise we can go up and down so that's um, this way we need to burn to go up towards it. Now this takes a lot of practice to get as good as I am but uh, if you're not as good as I am you know just dock however you find easiest this is the way I find easiest. And there you go, we're pretty much perfectly in line now. I'm going to go back to target mode, set that as the target. And uh, yeah, we're pr pretty much lined up perfectly. Um, and now, there we go, I'm going to hit H, which is going to burn towards the target. We'll burn forwards. And um, try and keep the prograde marker lined up with the target marker on the nav ball. And then you should actually essentially hit your target. I'm going to pitch down a little bit, slow myself down a little bit so we don't go in too fast. But uh, yeah, if everything goes right, then you should make a successful dock. Before we do anything else, we're going to alt click on our two fuel tanks in here. We probably don't need to do this, but we can transfer the fuel into our main fuel tank on the command and service module which might might come in handy I guess we probably won't need it though um, but you know it's worth doing because we do have that little extra bit of fuel left and uh, the other thing obviously we need to do is bring the kerbals over so you can do that either if you don't know which kerbal it is you can uh, just click on the crew hatch there left click not right click and then click on the kerbal that you want to EVA or, and then hit EVA and uh, yeah, now we just need to move the kerbals over. Obviously, in real life, they wouldn't have to do an EVA to do this. They can climb through the docking ports, but uh, in Kerbal Space Program, they can't. So we're going to switch them over like that. And uh, yeah, there we go. That's all the kerbals in. So we can undock and close the shield on this docking port. And this is just going to be left here. This is going to be essentially debris. But we don't need to worry too much about that. And now I'm just going to make sure we're in a stable orbit, which we are. And uh, we need to time warp round until we're somewhere sort of around where our periapsis is, actually. Because we're going to need to burn so that we go in the opposite direction that the moon is traveling. So that when we get out of the moon's sphere of influence, we're, we've got as little velocity and relative to Kerbin as possible. Which means we'll fall straight down to Kerbin and enter its atmosphere. So I'll show you that in a second, but basically you need to burn. So obviously the moon's going around this way, so we need to burn so that we end up going out of the moon's sphere of influence in this direction. And the closer you get it to this line, uh, you, um, the better. You want to get it as close to parallel with that line as possible. So when we get to about here, which it should be around here, um, we're going to burn prograde. And you'll see our apoapsis getting extended out like that. And eventually you'll see... We get the escape trajectory, there we go, and this is pointing out pretty much in the same direction as this line. As long as it's reasonably close, you should be able to do it, you just need to keep burning prograde. If this goes off to, to you know, in too much of a different direction, you can burn towards the moon or away from the moon to do it, to sort of fix that problem. But uh, yeah, you shouldn't have too much trouble doing this, this is an easier part of the mission. And you want to get your periapsis around Kerbin to probably around 20 kilometers if you can. I wouldn't go any higher than 30 kilometers, or uh, you know, you don't want it to be hitting the ground. Although, without deadly reentry or anything installed, you should be reasonably safe. So there we go. That's 40 kilometers. This is just very fine adjustments, by the way. There we go. 25 kilometers. That's absolutely fine. So we can um, time warp now and quick save as well, since we know we're safe. We can quick save and yep, right in Kerbin's sphere of influence. And we're going to come down to here. And before we hit the atmosphere, we're going to split off that other stage like that. I'm going to turn off SAS and uh, we'll re enter the atmosphere. And then when we get closer to the ground, we'll activate those parachutes so that we don't um, obviously hit the ground too hard. So it looks like we're probably going to come over the ocean, which isn't a bad thing. Um, it's probably the safest way to come down if your ship is only a command pod. But it doesn't make that much difference, really. Um, but yeah, 
you'll see some nice re-entry effects. This is in four times time warp, so it looks a bit faster than it actually is. And you'll see just the air resistance will slow you down. So if you're over the ocean, then this will be your actual altitude because this is above sea level. Whereas if you're coming down above land, then uh, the actual altitude, the only way you can find it is through the IVA view and it is the radar altitude. And that only works below a few thousand meters up. Anyway, now we're getting really close to the ground. We're just, well, not the ground, the ocean. Uh, we're going to hit space again, deploy those parachutes. And uh, yeah, that means that uh, all we have to do is float down to the ocean and then we're home safe. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope the tutorial helped you. Um, helped you do this and yeah if you liked it then please give it a thumbs up or a favorite because that uh, that really helps me and if you have any suggestions or questions then please do leave a comment down below so that I get you know good feedback good feedback is always appreciated I don't mind you saying oh that bit wasn't so good or you know the way you explained this wasn't so good as long as you say how you think I could improve it because that really helps me so anyway as always thanks for watching and have a nice day